Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Bant Protector. Welcome back to another standard gameplay video, everybody. I really do appreciate you being here. I hope you're having a fantastic start to your week. Hopefully you were able to catch yesterday's gameplay video, and hopefully you're going to enjoy today's. This is a, this is a weird one. Uh, we're trying something out here, and I'm not super optimistic about it, but I just thought, you know, let's try something kind of fun. This is Bant Protector, the idea being that it's built around cards like Cemetery Protector. Uh, flash 4 mana 3 4. When it enters the battlefield, you exile a card from a graveyard, when you play a land or cast a spell, if it shares a card type with the exiled card, you actually put a 1-1 white human creature onto the battlefield. So for those of you who are in like modern gameplay style, uh, this feels very similar to a like young pyromancer style deck or maybe a monastery mentor deck, albeit a lot worse, but uh, the idea is pretty similar. Uh, it's to exile an instant from either graveyard, ideally the opponent's, but obviously we can we can exile it from our own, uh, and then utilize all these other instants to basically continuously control the game while also presenting a lot of board presence that's going wide, uh, that even if they answer one thing, they still have a lot more to go. Uh, now, we do have a little bit of a counter sub-theme. This is not a Broker's Ascendancy deck, but we do have the Pact Weaver here, which enters the battlefield with a shield counter on it, allows us to pay, play from the top of our deck by removing a counter from a creature we control, uh, in addition to playing the additional cost to, you know, whatever's on top of the deck. So, uh, to, to throw out some counters, we have the Wandering Emperor as a two of. We also have Elspeth resplendent uh, to plus up as best we can. Uh, Elspeth obviously provides just another win condition as well. The minus three uh, does literal nothing um, aside from get a land. <laughs> uh, and so just something to consider that that really isn't that helpful for us. However, uh, the plus one is obviously where we want to be anyway. Uh, we do have quite a bit of, you know, basic tempo stuff in the early game with like Fading Hope. Uh, we've got Quandrix Command, which does a great job of dealing with the Naya Runes deck. Broker's Charm does a very similar job. Uh, Endless Detour, just a card I'm trying out here as a two of, uh, really stalls the opponent out, uh, which is pretty fun. Uh, we do have Dwari Disruption and Negate for a little bit of just hard counters, uh, or soft counters in the case of Disruption. We do have two Fateful Absence in case we find ourselves up against a deck that's really like, uh, not Voltron necessarily, but just a deck that's really focused on a single creature, uh, or maybe just a handful. Fateful Absence does a qu- uh, pretty reasonable job of dealing with that. And then of course we have Doomscar and Farewell at the top end. Memory Deluge is a two of, just serves for a little bit of card draw as well as that Broker's Ascendance, or uh, Broker's Charm, excuse me. Both of these kind of provide us with some card uh, advantage engines. So all that to say, this is an interesting one. Again, I don't have very high expectations. I'll just be honest. This is 100% just a list I threw together that I thought looked kind of fun. Uh, I have practiced with it. I've tinkered with it just a little bit. Uh, and you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, we may get no wins today, guys. Just gonna be honest. But you know what? It's cool. I just wanted to see what we could do with the Cemetery Protector in particular, uh, because I do think this is quite an interesting card. So let's jump into it. Let's see how we do, guys. Hopefully we can get at least one win. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll have some fun. <laughs> All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. Uh, kind of an interesting hand. It's very heavy, of course, on the counter magic. Uh, we do need a white source. Weirdly, I'm going to try it. Uh, I don't think this is a good hand by any means. Uh, however, having double Jabari Disruption is kind of interesting to me. Um, I think we'll use one of them here. Uh, and that way we can leave up the Besiju. I like having this available just because obviously the runes decks are very frustrating. And so to, to have the availability to just kill an enchantment uh, is pretty relevant. All right, interesting. Uh, very interesting. Well, this is becoming a lot worse. We will just go ahead and throw this out now. Uh, we definitely need just a white source. Like, a white source would be great because it opens up quite a number of options for us. Uh, curious to see what the opponent, if they play anything, uh, actually goes for. That's one to counter. Easy counter with the Jawari Disruption there. Perfect, perfect. Wow, all the blue sources. Okay. Uh, on the bright side, we haven't missed a land drop. Uh, on the downside, none of these land drops are white. Okay, excellent. That significantly helps. Um, 
I think we'll pass here. I don't love this because obviously they're they're most likely going to be able to draw a card here. Um, but we'll see. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. Uh, do we go ahead and kill this? I think we do just in case. We'd really like to dig for a land here, but I don't really want to give them an extra card. I'm sure they've got... Okay, they've got a shelter. Uh, I'm actually going to negate that. Um, normally I wouldn't fight over this, but I think we're not going to have too many opportunities to actually do those kinds of things, and so I'd much rather go ahead and get that down now. Uh, white source is online. That's good. So I think we'll just pass here. Um, cool. So we can just Broker's Charm uh, at some point here, which will probably be what we end up doing. Just to draw an extra card, uh, that's certainly, or an extra two cards, excuse me. Getting further into the deck is obviously pretty important for us here, so um, with the Farewell in particular, if they don't pop this clue token, that's going to be kind of a bad hit for them. Let's go ahead and Broker's Charm here, and let's see what they do. Uh, excellent. All right. Let's do this. Uh, we are further away because of this, uh, which is honestly kind of fine. Uh, it doesn't really matter that much. So we can do this plus this, I believe. Yeah. Uh, and thankfully, this again has flash, so we don't have to pull that trigger quite yet. Four, five, six. Okay, so they are going to go ahead and do that. That's fine. Uh, cool. So we'll see what we end up needing to do here. Um, okay, they played a shelter. That's actually very good to know. Um, hmm. All right, let's see what they uh, they exile here. Let's see. Hold on. Uh, let's do this. Uh, what we're gonna do is in response exile this so they don't get the uh, the card that they triggered with uh, And now we can Quandrix command in response to basically anything Okay uh, Yeah, so I think what we'll do Is Perhaps just this so we can bounce this and we'll do this and I think we just throw this back into the deck. Um, as much as point and shoot removal really isn't the goal of the deck at all, um, this does give us an opportunity to kind of handle some of these uh, things. Wow, we just immediately drew it. Interesting. Um, all right, so the question is, do we just go ahead and do this? I'm going to say yes. Uh, exile all creatures. Do we exile the graveyards? Um, based on what's in our hand, yeah, I think we do. So what's nice here is we get a 4-4, four four, and now, obviously, we just have a Fateful Absence in hand, so when they do go to play uh, Rydain, uh, we should be able to kind of deal with her. Um, yeah. And also worth noting, we do just have Hall of the Storm Giants available to us, so like we're in that controlling phase of the game at this point, um, but we're kind of getting to the point where we can start pressuring, which is obviously more important. Um, very curious to see what the opponent actually does this turn. They've got, I mean, quite a number of cards available, so they're they're up on the card adv advantage end of things. Um, looks like they are also considering some options, so cool. Very cool. All right, sick. Um, I think we are just going to go ahead and blow up Adelin. Um, <laughs> nice. Uh, let's just go ahead and do this. Uh, and we'll just attack him for quite a bit. Nice. Um, so depending on how this goes, we can Fading Hope and potentially just kind of get him. Uh, I mean, so far it's been working out pretty well. Looks like they're just digging. So that does take off the, well, I guess... Yeah, so they don't have enough for the Cave of the Frost Dragon, which is relevant. Hmm. 
Okay. That's all fine. I really hope they attack. Uh, oh yeah, this has vigilance. Sorry, that makes no sense. Uh, let's go ahead and bounce. Um, we do get a scry out of that, which is relevant because we do kind of need to find some action. Unfortunately, we don't. Um, okay, uh, let's go ahead and do this and move to attacks. I guess technically we should have done that in a different order, but it doesn't matter. Um, and they're just going to block here. Perfect. Um, I think we'll sandbag the land, uh, only because we really don't need more land in any given point at this, at, at this stage in the game. I think our, our goal is much more just to be pressuring. Um, <laughs> I do like that. Uh, all right, let's activate. Um, what I will do here is throw out the land. Um, and we'll see. Looks like they don't do anything yet. They probably have something now. Okay. So they, if they do this, they have a ward cost to pay. Uh, so that does tap them out. And then they take four. So hopefully with the Quandrix command, we should be able to finish this off. Oh, nope. Just kidding. Um, all right. Fair enough. All right, uh, well, I mean, hey, the opponent is kind of working it. Um, let's see. I will play the land now. Um, hmm. So I presume we just pass and Quandrix command at some point here. Um, we'll see how this goes. I was feeling really good, and then they played the Wandering Emperor, which I think, to be fair, is not unexpected. Like, of course they've got it, but uh, I was feeling great about it, and now, obviously, a little bit tricky. Uh, totally am fine with them bolstering up the Rydain. Um, this is kind of exactly what we want. So let's return, and let's shuffle. We're going to return this, and we're going to shuffle. Uh... I'm honestly going to submit zero. I know this feels weird, but like these single point and shoot things aren't really going to do it. Uh, what we need is like a farewell or really farewell is the big one. Um, so let's see what we can get. Obviously they can just replay the Rydane, but uh, that really slows them down, which is the goal, of course. Um, even a Doomscar would be pretty good just to get rid of what's on the board here. Now, now would be great. Um, unfortunately, we're just going to draw land. Oh, no. Um, yep. Feels kind of bad. Uh, but, you know, that's just how it shakes out. We do have an, an overabundance of lands in this deck because we have got, like, one, it's a control deck at heart. So, like, we've got a lot of things that we'd like to be able to do. Um, so it's pretty important for us to hit our land drops. But, unfortunately, I think that's what's causing some of the problem. Um... Just a little flooded, uh, but it's fine. We're down to seven. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's not helpful. Um, cool. Well, unfortunately, that is a loss. Let's jump into game two. What's up, guys? Before we jump into the next game, I just want to remind you, if you would like to pick up this month's Patreon rewards, feel free to do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, here we are for our second game. Uh, and yeah, I can very happily keep this. We've got a Doomscar with a Quandrix Command and then, of course, the Cemetery Prowler. So, uh, or Protector, not Prowler. Uh, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. We can go ahead and lead on this uh, and see how things go. Bazoon giving us a little hello. Nice to see you, my friend. Uh, let's go ahead and throw this out and we'll just... We'll foretell that Doomscar. We know we need the green here, uh, and we have no other green sources, so we might as well go ahead and get that one down. Interesting. They oopsed. Uh, fascinating. I'm a little curious as to what that was about, uh, but that's fine. Uh, nice to know that they have enchantments, because we do get to counter those. Um, I mean... I would love to wait on that, so I think maybe we use the Broker's Charm? Yep, just gonna go ahead and Broker's Charm that. 
Uh, I'd like to wait on this until we have the creature out, obviously, like to, to throw some counters on. Uh, so now we can just kind of wait. Truthfully, that was a bit of an aggressive broker's charm, but the naturalist in particular is very good at uh, obviously handling a lot of other things. So it's not something I'm really interested in leaving out. Uh, now let's do this. Uh, and we'll actually shuffle that Broker's Charm back in. Um, Broker's Charm is obviously good against an enchantment deck, so it seems pretty obvious to, to throw that back in. Uh, and again, we can just kind of wait. Uh, eventually, we do have Doomscar as well, so it's worth noting that we don't have to aggressively go for these kinds of things, but I'm kind of fine with it. Um, yeah, okay. So this will work out quite well for us, I believe. So let's go ahead and do this. Um... Let's go ahead and exile the Quandrix command. Uh, so now every time we play an instant, obviously we get something out of it, which is great. Um, then let's go ahead and destroy the Hollow Taunting, which gives us a 1-1. One, one, and then we can attack for three pretty safely. Uh, again, this is a pretty well-positioned deck against enchantments. We may not win this game, but uh, it does a pretty reasonable job of dealing with a lot of these things. Um, Okay, uh, so let's attack in. Uh, I think what we'll do is end the turn. Um, oh, that wasn't that wasn't helpful. Um, my idea is to bounce this and then be able to leave the counter up. Um, all right, sick. So again, we're just kind of progressing our board while handling theirs, um, and then we can counter this Hollowed Haunting on the way back down at some point. We also just have Farewell worth noting, so like if we get one more land, which I expect we will at some point, obviously, um, we just have a way to kind of deal with all of this. Uh, and thankfully, we actually get that back, so that's pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and just attack in. No real reason not to. Um, and I think we just wait Honestly, I'm not like, there's not a huge reason to um, do anything too crazy here. So let's return and let's counter. I'm going to return and I'm going to counter. Pretty easy. Um, not a bad draw at all. Let's keep progressing. Um, we're kind of at a point where we can, so let's go for it. We're just kind of pinging away here, hoping for the best. Again, we've got the farewell. So like my thing is at some point, we will just be able to farewell the board. Uh, we will get our cemetery prowler back, or protector, I keep saying prowler. Uh, in which case we'll be relatively well positioned to kind of handle everything. Um, obviously fading hope is not great against a spirited companion, but that's fine. Okay, uh, cool. So this is great, actually. We're doing just fine. Um, I mean, easy play, just attack in. <laughs> um, kind of curious to see if they actually block here one of the one ones. Yeah, they do. Okay, cool. That's fine. Uh, again, we've got Fading Hope back up, so like, if they do anything crazy or tricksy, we can just Fading Hope, and now we've got you know, four damage right now. Um, I'd love to get this off the field, which unfortunately, well, I guess we could, we could have just exiled all enchantments, but okay, cool. Uh, interesting. Let's see what they do. I'm going to go ahead and bounce this now. Uh, that gets the land off the top. That's super not helpful, but that's fine. Um, and now we can just kind of exile all enchantments here. Um, do we wait though? Cause there's not a huge reason to go for it yet. We have the attacks in the air is kind of my thing. Um, and so I'm not really stressed for the, like the big plays here. I think I can just wait. Um, we'll see. I mean, they can certainly, they have cave of the frost dragon. They do need one more land, but like, I feel pretty good. I feel pretty good. Um, Next turn we exile all enchantments with farewell and then they're kind of kind of shot. <laughs> um, okay. 
Interesting. So this does change the math, worth noting, because this is a this is not an enchantment. Um, so I think we are going to just farewell. Um, let's double check everything. Yeah. So creatures, enchantments. And I think that's it. So it's gonna get everything off the field except for the cemetery prowler. Uh, which we can use to hit, like, a Fading Hope. All right. Uh, so now it's up to them. Um, if they've got it, they've got it. Uh, if they spend the turn removing the Cemetery Prowler, that's not that big of a deal. Um, okay. Cool. We have another Pact Weaver here, so, like, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Uh, we also have Beseju, which is very good. So let's obviously attack first. Uh, they literally have to block. Um, and I think we just do this, leaving up either of these two. Um, cool. Yeah, I mean, that seems pretty good. Uh, so if they play like a Hollowed Haunting, we negate it. If they play like a Naturalist, we can just Beseju it uh, at the end of the turn. And they're basically down to nothing. Cool. Did we do it? think we did it uh let's see all right uh i'm just gonna attack him with all and i think we did it guys oh they can cave with the frost dragon sure uh <laughs> we actually have the solution to that though uh let's do this and remove the shield counter <laughs> uh yep there it is good game uh, they are completely out of mana. They cannot block. We'll keep the farewell. Um, yep. That was awesome. Uh, what a game. That was a really interesting one, guys. I really, really liked that one. Uh, we'll try for one more. We're kind of pushing time, but I think we can do it, guys. Let's see if we can get another win. All right, guys. Here we are. This is definitely going to have to be our last game. Uh, this is a weird hand. Um... I think we'll try it, but I'm not optimistic. If we find ourselves against an aggro deck, this will be a very quick game. Uh, also, I did want to mention, I actually updated our graphics settings in the game. So, oh, man. Uh, and so we actually have this little like motion blur going on, which I really love, and I'm stoked about it. Uh, I know it's kind of silly, but that was something that uh, I noticed in Symphoneers gaming, uh, which if you don't know who Symphoneers is, my goodness, should you go check out Symphoneers. But... Um, I noticed it in his gameplay. I was like, oh my gosh, that's so smooth looking. And so we've we've officially updated it. So we can get a little bit of that going. This is obviously terrible for us. Um, really what we need is a sweeper, uh, which we very well might get. Uh, we've got ways to kind of pull some stuff out here. So we'll see. Okay, uh, well, technically that's a sweeper. Um, I think the play is going to be to play the Pact Weaver here, expecting that they're going to be able to kill the Pact Weaver, but that this is going to stall the game enough where we can do something. Elspeth is kind of cool. Uh, we might be able to get... If Pact Weaver does survive and we can um, throw some like lifelink counters around, that would be pretty awesome. Uh, because then at the very least we stall again until we've got Farewell available. And then it's an exile game, uh, which is... I think something that this deck is probably going to be struggling against. So, um, cool. Obviously, they get quite a bit of uh, counter stuff out of this, which is good. All right. Yeah, very good. Wow, all of the damage. Oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah, that's really good. Uh, not a lot we can do about that, unfortunately. Um, that's incredible. <laughs> that was really good. Uh, how much does the ward cost? Too much. Too, too much. Um, yeah, that's like ridiculously good. Um, so what can we do? I mean, we can exile this and gain two. Uh, that's probably not going to be enough. Uh, alternatively, we can do this. Um... The minus does nothing, though. Um, I'm trying to think. We might just lose. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm going to... 
I'm gonna do this and then do this and not attack. I don't think we can survive uh, because they've got these guys. Like, they're just too fast. This was like such a good start for them. I'm amazed. Um, that's phenomenal. I, I mean, truthfully, like, you just can't be upset. Like, they just had a killer start. Uh, yeah. Very well. Uh, I mean, they just attack us with everything and win. If they attack the Wandering Emperor, I'm gonna laugh. Uh, I guess technically they can spare one of them. No, yeah, okay. I was gonna say. Uh, good game. I mean, I can't do anything with that. Oh my gosh, and they have a play with fire. Wow. All right. Well, fair enough. That was a very, very quick game. But honestly, like, they just had a killer hand. I, yeah, Fair enough. You got me. Let's talk about this deck for a second. All right, guys. So, Bant uh, Protector. Interesting little list. Um, we did kind of get to see the Protector do its thing, which is kind of nice. Uh, obviously, that last game was a complete wash. Uh, but the reality of this deck is that it plays like kind of just a bad control deck. Um, it's really good, in my opinion, against certain decks in the meta right now. Uh, any enchantment based deck, it's got the tools to kind of deal with it. Um, it's very tooled out for that. It's also pretty well tooled out for Reanimator because you do have the Protector, which can just come down at instant speed after they target uh, their Reanimator target, uh, and you can just exile it, <laughs> uh, which is pretty good. Um, it also has the Farewells, of course. Uh, which are really good at handling a lot of the decks right now. Uh, and because it can usually, aside from that last game, protect itself to where it can get to six mana, uh, as long as you draw the farewell, you kind of have a fighting chance. So um, I do really like the deck. It's a fun little pet project of mine to kind of make this one work. Um, I don't think it's perfect. I think it's relatively bad at the moment, um, but it was still fun to, to, to give it a shot and uh, and see some different cards. I think we, we don't normally see like Cemetery Protector uh, and the the detour card the like three mana bounce a thing kind of deal like there's a lot of stuff that are that is different about this deck which i excuse me which i really like uh and so i was happy to to give this one a shot i hope in the future we can like better the deck if that makes sense and if you guys have suggestions leave them uh in the comment section i'd, I'd appreciate it but thank you guys very much i really do appreciate you watching i hope your tuesday goes exceptionally well it was a blast to have you guys here thank you so much for watching i'll see you later